What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to set up pagination for your visuals. This will work for any visual that shows multiple values of data, such as a table or a bar chart or even a donut chart. You can use this with many different kinds of visuals. To understand what I mean by visual pagination, take a look at what we have on our screen here. We are only showing the sales for our first eight cities, both in our table and our bar chart. We can see that these cities line up across the two visuals and we can click through each individual page of data for example we're now on page two so now we have different cities and we can go to page three and page four and these are ordered based on this total sales measure so instead of showing all of these individual city names across the x-axis or across our table and adding a scroll bar we can set up this pagination so that the user can just flip through pages to see individual bite-sized pieces of the entire data set the slicer that we're using down below is the play axis slicer, which you may have seen on my channel a few times now. Uh, and this also gives us the ability to actually play through each individual selection. So we can just click the play button and have it run automatically. So you can paginate it and flip through uh, by the user selection or just allowing it to play on its own. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into how you would set this up. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this page and I'm going to get rid of my bar chart and let's focus on how this would look or work in a table. So we have our city name and our total sales. We already have everything set up with the pagination and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the filter that drives that pagination. So by default, this data set is going to contain a lot of different cities with sales. We can see that there are uh, probably upwards of 100 cities shown here. So we can go ahead and set up a ranking measure to tell us the order of these cities based on their total sales and we have that right here called city ranking. So let's take a look at the code. It's a normal rank X function, taking all selected city name from my cities table. And keep in mind that this is the data column that is driving this first column in my table. It is city, city name. So all selected for that column in my table, calculate total sales, and total sales is just the sum of my revenue column. So this can be any measure defined by you. And then finally, descending, I want to start with the largest value of sales and uh, also pass in the dense parameter so that we don't skip values in case there is a tie. So now that we have a normal ranking measure, let's go ahead and throw that in our table and see what it looks like. So we can see that the city with the top total sales, Sinclair, has a city ranking of one and it's just ranking itself as we go down our table. So now uh, we need to create another measure and I call this pagination. And this is simply dividing our city ranking by eight and then rounding up. So once we throw that in there, we'll be able to see what that looks like. And this is basically saying uh, all of the city rankings within the first eight values, we want to assign a one. If they're in the second eight values, we want to show the pagination value as two and so on. Keep in mind that the eight is arbitrary. You can change this up. This is just going to show you how many individual values that you wanna show on one page. We can change this to let's say 12 and that's going to change how these are divided. For example, these first 12 will be on the first page and then the next 12 will be on the second page. For now, let's go ahead and stick with eight. And now we just need something to drive this play axis slicer. This needs to be a table in your data model. Let's go ahead and take a look at this table that I've created. So I have just called this table pagination and I've set it equal to generate series from one to 10 and stepping by one. So that's just gonna give you a table from one to 10. You can change this to a hundred or any value that you need. I know that I'm never going to have more than uh, 10 pages of cities at a time. So this will depend on how large your data is. Maybe you only have three pages of data and you can change this 10 to a three. So you can just flip through page one, two, and three. It is entirely up to you. But this generate series is just giving me a list from one to 10. And once I have that list from one to 10, I'm throwing that value into the play axis slicer. And I will just show you quickly where I get that. If you go to get more visuals, and open up the custom visuals within Power BI Desktop. You can search for play, and this play axis dynamic slicer is the first one that will show up. Go ahead and add that to your report. And once that's in there, just throw that at the bottom and throw in that pagination value. So now once we click this play button, 
you can see that this page one, two, and three, it's going to iterate through those 10 records within that pagination table. But as you can see, our table visual is not being affected, and that's because we haven't set up the final filter in order to uh, make sure that that table only shows a certain page of data. We do that with this is current page measure I've created, and it's very simple. It just says if our pagination measure equals min, the min value of our pagination table pagination column, return a one or a zero. So when we think about this, this pagination measure right here, it's either one or two or three. If the pagination value equals basically the current pagination page that we're on in our slicer, we want to return a one telling us that we should show it or a zero telling us that we should not show it. So let's go ahead and throw in is current page into our table to see that in action. Let's give this a little bit more size. So as you can see, we have ones and zeros. So everything on the first page is showing one currently because our slicer is currently on page one. If we were to step through it, we would see how this would change. So we're on page one still, we're on page two, let's pause it. So everything on page one is a zero, and now everything on page two is a one. And just to nail this home, let's step through to page three, and there we go. So everything on pagination value three is an is current page equals one, everything else is a zero. So as you might be able to see, the last step is to filter our table down based on this is current page measure. So let's click on our table, and let's come on over here to is current page and I'm going to set this equal to one and now let's apply that filter and our table has been filtered down to only eight values is current page equals one so let's go ahead and step through and make sure this is working as expected so let's go ahead and start on page one and we'll manually go through uh, actually you'll have to start over sometimes Let's go ahead and click play now. It should start from one. And now we're on page two. We have new cities coming through. And now we can just see that we're stepping through those pages like we saw earlier. At this point, we don't need our extra columns for information here. So I'm going to get rid of our last three columns. And we can even change this to a different visual now. So let's go ahead and set up uh, a donut chart because that's a little bit different. So here are our eight. Uh, slices of the pie and actually for this demo I'm actually going to change our pagination from showing eight to showing let's say five because that will fill out the donut a little bit easier for us to understand and before we click play here uh, one thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, this slicer will filter down a table inherently but when you change it to another visual such as a bar chart or a donut you're going to have to edit the interactions just to make sure that it filters instead of cross highlighting so when we click on format click edit interactions and when we're clicked on our slicer make sure it's on filter instead of highlight and that's how it's going to be able to flip through those pages so now that that's done i'm going to get rid of my edit interactions and click play here and it's gonna be able to step through the individual pages on our donut chart. And you can see those colors changing as well um, and different cities shown here in the legend. And final demo here, let's go ahead and change our uh, donut chart to a normal bar chart here and walk through showing five per page and we can step through. And the best thing about the current setup that we have created here is that since we are using all selected in our uh, city ranking measure, this is dynamic based on slicer selections that are passed in. So if I uh, create a new slicer on our page and I throw in something completely unrelated such as a customer category, I'm gonna take my customer category name field. We can go ahead and make a slicer selection such as let's take gift store. So we can see that the number one city is now Abbotsburg instead of previously it was Sinclair. So now it's Abbotsburg and we can step through again. So we're passing through filters into our visual and then performing that city ranking. So we don't have to hard code any of those city rankings. This is all performed on the fly.
So that's the entire trick. I hope you like this video. It's pretty cool in case you have limited space on your report canvas and you don't want users to scroll and you just want them to filter through pages, maybe click through individually to see individual pages of data. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and check out our training over at training.bielite.com. We have some great content around Power BI, DAX, and Alteryx at the moment. Hope to see you there.